tell us or describe some different ministries that you're a part of? A few of them that I'm a part of is I teach Bible class. I teach, work with the cradle roll department. When the children turn age two, I get them and we keep them until the following August. And I also work at Mother's Morning Out and I work with the three-year-olds. And then I also work with the food ministry. And what we do is if someone has a death in their family, then we try to see how we can help them at that time. And we'll try to take food uh, immediately after the death because we know different people will be coming in. And then we ask them, can we f serve food after the funeral or before the funeral? We try to meet their needs. And so there's Pam Winkler and Angie McClure and myself. And we just try to uh, feed the family and do whatever we can to help them during that difficult time. I've been teaching, so I'm in the education department, been teaching actually since I was 14 years old in the preschool area because I love children and um, involved with Pat. We take food to uh, families that have had a bereavement in their family um, and I'm uh, on the committee for the Ladies Hearts Ministry that we've just started up to try to get the ladies closer together and also the Mother's One and Out program. How did you get started with the different ministries you're involved with? Um, well, I have a great influence from my grandmother and my mother, and uh, they were both Bible class teachers, which influenced me to want to be a Bible class teacher. And I do love children, and so I, I fully believe whatever you're involved in, you really need to love it because you'll put your whole heart into it. Um, that's another reason I do Mother's Morning Out because I love children. Um, I love the fact that at some point I might can influence somebody, uh, whether it's a little child or their parents. Um, we have a lot of children that don't have the opportunity to go to church and some of the first opportunities they have to hear about Jesus is through Mother's Morning Out and um, several of them don't even have their own Bible and they get it you know, the first, their first Bible from preschool. So it's kind of cool. That's awesome. How did the hearts thing come about? Um, we saw the need for the ladies at church here to have an opportunity to build each other up or to um, have some uh, group of ladies that they felt comfortable with that um, they could pray together, they could have a devotional thought because so many times when you come to church, it's the hi bye, how are you, real quick, and you're on to your next thing, you know. And uh, we just felt like there was a need for the ladies to have an opportunity to, to sit together and confide in each other if they needed to, or have prayer together. Um, and we try to do some service projects and send cards, and um, you know, try to see opportunities to serve members at Madison as well as the community. How does someone become more aware of other people's needs? Like, is that something that people can develop? I believe so. As you see other people, uh, there was a lady when I moved to St. Louis, there was a lady, her name was Thelma Moon, and she was fantastic. We watched her, and she was always doing kind things for other people. And I kept thinking, I want to be like Thelma doing different things and so you can just there's so many opportunities especially with us having so many members here that we need to help each other watch out for each other so it doesn't have to be a big program it can be if you see somebody walk in or if you see somebody crying go up to them and say what can I do is there something wrong and just be a listening ear to them and Facebook is a wonderful thing because a lot of times people will share things on Facebook and they don't always call and tell Jason Brian or the church office that something is going on and so if you see something like that just shoot them a private message or call them and say hey can we get together let's talk about it or you know just be concerned about them. You've touched on this a little bit how does your mindset how has that changed as you've gotten older about helping other people? Um, I think when you're in a crisis yourself and you see the outpouring of, of cards or um, when someone brings food to your house or someone, you know, it could be something simple like just acknowledging them at church, giving them a hug and asking, you know, well, I heard about your son or your daughter. How's that going? And, you know, when you experience that on the receiving end, it makes you have the desire, you know, to see how important it is. And you can, you know, let that be a factor in demonstrating that to other people. Would you say as a whole that 
the older generation here at Madison, they enjoy their conversations and relationships with the younger kids? Oh yes, they love it. They will talk about it. Uh, we had a get together at some point when the teenagers came and sat with us and the people talked about it for ages going, hey, that was really neat. Did you see what they did? You know, And we don't always get to be around the teenagers. So when we have an opportunity, the Forever Young Banquet is fantastic. We look forward to that each year. And just the different things of, uh, I know at different times, some of the teenagers have come and sat with us. And that's really neat to think, hey, Hey, they even want to sit with us or they want to talk to us so we're really interested in what they're doing and some of them we have seen since they were two three-year-olds or babies and to watch them grow up it's just amazing we're so proud of what they do